I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that come into play. Yeah, it's definitely... Well, you know, Pithra doesn't exactly have zoning options per se. You have uh, Pyra, who is, you know, a boxer, and then you have Mithra, who is a uh, sword cheek. Mm -hmm. so, and there's not... And then you don't have cheek needles, so then your options are, well, you know... It's, it's technically zoning if I run in their face and get in their zone, right? That's like, right. A, that's like an interpretation It's of just zone. a very small zone that's Ab just around you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is a postmodern zoning. <laughs> but it looks like you're right. We're going to be seeing Rob versus the Aegis on FD, actually, is where we're starting. Uh, what do you think about this as a starter, especially against Rob? So I think this is interesting because both of these characters do benefit from the ability to sort of bully their opponents in neutral. I do think um, Hithra or Aegis, I think Aegis is a better nickname. Uh, That's what the Xenoblade players like. Yeah, yeah. Aegis uh, generally does benefit a little bit in Mithra form for the combos, I would imagine. But I think the both of them can take advantage of not having great landing options. Uh, Rob, for all the recovery in terms of vertical and horizontal distance, it's not very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of landing back on FD, you're going to have a little bit of an issue. But we are seeing a little bit of the mid-stage zoning right here. Frozen trying to close the gap down on Dill's Rob, trying to remain safe, sticking by the ledge, going for the safest scenario. But now off stage, going to get comboed off of into the gyro. Yeah, no, see. Frozen's gyro play so far has actually been pretty, pretty good. Blazing in, coming in. Blazing in, very good at covering the ledge options there. Dill going to try to land in the center of the stage. Air dodges through the up tilt. Oh, no center stage. Actually pushes the gyro. I didn't know Blazing yeah. did that. Tries to go. Ooh. Oh, I Dill, think. Dill, uh, Dil, I think, tried to uh, pick up the gyro and start spinning it again, but it was unfortunately put in that kind of whiff animation. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit far off the camera and a misjudgment on the distance on that one. Uh, tries to go a little deep for the edge guard on that one with the forward air. Actually going to pay for yeah. it with their life. Okay. Rob Tornado. Right. Back off not going to do it quite yet. Yeah, now Frozen has to get off the ledge, and the up smash is going to catch the double jump attack. Mm -hmm. for it's even stocks. It's almost. It looks a little bit like a Yolo move, but that does catch a lot of options between the scoop and the large, uh, somewhat disjointed hitbox on the uh, top side of that to catch jumps. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially with the uh, the spacing. Ooh, foresight coming in. Mm -hmm. Foresight coming in, going to uh, dodge in place, able to get a punish with the jab. Now looking once more at an edge guard situation. Actually gets caught in the transition. I don't think there's any invincibility between the change of ages for me. Uh, I think there is a, a little bit. A little tiny uh, bit? Yeah. Oh, I would be surprised. I, I think yeah. I've, I've heard that there's like no invincibility. So I'm like, hey! Okay. <laughs> I should uh, check that. It is a, a very fast animation, but I think it might have something similar to uh, Pokemon Trainer. But Hyra up air. Gonna be putting Dill at almost a full stock disadvantage. Yep, and that's not something you have to do with Pokemon Trainer, is that gigantic uh, Pyra up air. Actually going to... Oh, that could have been a big punish. Mm -hmm. That back air right there, that Folk 10 edge just barely clipped with one of the hits there. If that hadn't, that might have been death. That I think so. Not very heavy. Right. Yeah, they're both not very heavy, but Mithra especially. Although we do have Pyra now going to do the Providence Vault to get back to the stage on that one on the reverse. Actually dodges under in neutral by the change to Mithra and running under there. It's very quick character. Frozen is playing very well around these gyros. Uh, shielding when necessary. Uh, yeah, I feel like Dill just hasn't been able to get much started with the gyro. Mm -hmm. We are seeing uh, quite a bit of Aegis bullying in neutral over here. And it can be difficult because Rob, when rushed down, Rob's moves are not the slowest on the ground, but there is a recovery in the air, which is where Rob often wants to play neutral at a bit of a range, like against sorties. Mm -hmm. All right. Actually, I think, I'm not sure if that was a roll or if that was a, a shield drop dash under that one under the gyro there, but either way. And just to avoid the gyro, keep it out of play in neutral there. Spacing out with the nares on this one. Got this it. should be it. Up throw. There yep. we go. Oh, that's hella dead. <laughs> Super dead. Yep, that was an unsafe uh, space near there. The plan might have been to land on top of the gyro to try to get out of the way, but I think it was spaced in such a way that they were trying to avoid that situation. Rosen didn't want to get tagged by that and combo with something else. All right, Dill making her way out of the corner. That's where I feel like she's been struggling a little bit in this matchup so far is getting off of ledge. 
Yeah, wow. she's been uh, pushed to the corner time and again on this one, and it doesn't help that you're at a uh, high percent like this. 162, any hit that you take is going to take you right back off stage. Will that? Oh, that definitely. Yeah, Frozen was ready for it. Uh, something I see Dill do quite a lot is hover just below the ledge and then uh, double jump come up with either a laser or a gyro, something to really just surprise the... Uh, the opponent who's uh, waiting for a ledge trap. Mm -hmm. But Frozen was ready for it that time with the blazing end. Yep, so one of the strongest things about that is because of uh, Rob's fuel, you can sort of stall just below the ledge on that one and threaten with the quick double jump laser forward air, both of which, uh, especially forward air, are very quick options. Mm -hmm. uh, you can re-grab the ledge on that one and that messes up anybody's uh, timings to try to trump you. Um, or you could even jump up and do a projectile with Gyro, which, if it's not shielded, uh, is now on the stage and protecting you as you recover. So there's a lot of options there to mix up. And then if you uh, try to go down, Jill might just react and she might get the full stage while you're off stage against Rob, mm -hmm. which is a rough place to be. Yeah. But it looks like we're going to be seeing the town and city counter pick coming out from Dill. Uh, maybe looking for some room to run around and uh, maybe get some more out of the gyros uh, that she just wasn't able to get from uh, from game one. Mm -hmm. I, foresight went so far. <laughs> yeah, Foresight, go I think it's supposed to be, uh, what, like the roll distance or is it uh, a separate? Oh, jeez. Don't, that 100% would have killed if it was uh, Pyro. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I Because it's so funny, right? Because I see the, the Mithra forward smash one, and I'm so used to the, the Pyro one. Even with the short time we've had it, I get, like, PTSD. It's like, oh, God, I'm going to die at zero. Like, I know. No, she, she's swinging, like, one of those light tubes at you. It's not an actual sword. Again, Frozen is just ready for these gyros with the foresight, getting so much uh, stage distance. Mm -hmm. And I do like the option there. Uh, opted to punish the forward smash, which does have a decent amount of recovery with the laser, not going up to too much risk, and actually a lot of damage on the fully charged one. And another uh, thing about Town and City coming in is the platforms on the side. Dill was having a bit of trouble coming out of the corner in game one. Mm -hmm. uh, the Town and City platform is going to give her a little bit more space to run, uh, run around on the ledge. Yep, an additional uh, position to land on. And then Rob, because of that quick jump up, uh, oh my god, that almost killed me. I think Town and City actually saved her. Yeah. Last zone. It's, uh, I always get that confused. Smash 4, it was the inverse. It was yeah. uh, low top and then wide sides. And now it's uh, high top and low sides. Yeah, but Frozen, with the first stock, still playing in from behind. I do think it's an interesting choice right there. Frozen between a rock and a hard place. We've seen a lot of times before Dill sandwiching uh, her opponents between Gyro uh, at the ledge. So just opted to go for the Photon Edge on that one. Try to go mm -hmm. for the Surprise Factor. Once again, making it back to the ledge. That is a little bit difficult to punish if you're not actively looking for it because of the wide uh, hitbox as it goes high. Mm -hmm. And then it snaps relatively quickly after. This is scary. This is like one up there to kill. Uh, Dill cannot just not get anything started. Frozen has been in control this whole time. Right. Scary place to be. Does bait out the prominence of on that one. Is able to get back to stage. But at 114 against the Pirate, this is a scary place to be. Especially Rage Pirate, 155%. Tossing on these gyros, trying Ooh. to assert a little bit of stage control, but still going to get clipped trying to come down. Dill maybe oh. a little bit hungry for the kill, coming down swinging with the arm murder. Uh, up throw, maybe? No. Uh, counter pick actually working against Dill, but finally taking that first stock. That might also be a part of the counter pick as well, is going for the early kills off the side with that quick forward air option, because uh, aside from, say, Mithra's uh, movement speed for the mix up, there's not too much that Aegis has to mix up the recovery, really. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of the movement and the uppies. And then uh, Photon Edge for the side. All right. This is a nice chase off stage. Ooh. I like that. Went to bait the air dodge. Goes for the Gimp. Doesn't nice quite tech. get it. All right. Nice. Very good. Patiently waits that out. Recognize that there wasn't an opportunity for a punish while you're coming down on the shield. All right. We've seen that again, pushing the gyro away with uh, Pyrus side beam, not taking the full stage. Scary place to be if you're Dill. Town and City Platform's coming in, though. Mm -hmm. Coming in clutch, landing with the Nair and keeping it a little bit safe to auto-cancel. All right. That, that could have been really bad. It could have killed. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. man. The huge forward air hitbox from Pyra. Mm -hmm. I believe that's called gerrymandering, is when you get a huge <laughs> plot of land like that and just take it all for yourself. Yeah, this this benefits me here. Let me toss out that aerial.
But yes, very well played from uh, both players on that one. Frozen with a really dominant show of the neutral game on this one. It sort of felt like Dill, even though she was putting a lot of good work in there, was always trying to like come off the bat foot like, okay, now I can play in the neutral. Yeah. You know, things like that back and forth.